In this video, I want to talk about how creepy things happen when you make a plan. I had started using weekly planners as a survival tactic. The first time I got a planner, I used it to help me with my job. Um, I was teaching high school art, applied technology, journalism, and at first it was just kind of a way for me to, you know, look at a glance at my whole week. And I like the, the tactile experience of putting pen to paper. Um, because I was an art teacher, uh, I asked my students if there was anything that they wanted in the art room. And <laughs> Uh, a student told me about these these pens, which I'm sure some of you recognize, but this is a a brand that comes out of uh, Japan. This is what the box looks like. But I really love these because they they're not super inky, which is what I'd used most of my life. Those really inky G2 pens, um, but they bleed through the page. And then. I'll show you the rest of my Amazon haul. I got um, this eight and a half by eleven, just blank white paper, no lines, and they've got the cardboard back. So I love to write with this because I can just take notes. I can tear it out. Um, you know, I can put a three-hole punch and keep them in a binder. You know, some people they have to type to get their thoughts out. But for me, as a creative writer, I don't want to see the page formatted. It slows me down. I start thinking about what the sentences look like. And with this, I don't give a shit. I'm just getting the ideas out. I started WearCat last year in September. So this is what I wrote. I wrote right here, 2024. It says 2024 right there. And then I wrote, the year Werecat pays my bills. And then I wrote smaller on here, introducing Werecat to the world, what works, what doesn't, acquiring clients, fostering relationships, release one new ebook a month, fiction and nonfiction. <laughs> okay, that last part was insane. Um, now look at this. I, I've got my first quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, and all that stuff. Um, look what I got right here. March, the third month of the year, full-time wear cat. So when I was filling this out, it was probably October, November, December. And I gave myself the first three months of the year to go solo and start my own business. That didn't happen, okay? I was not ready to quit my job at the end of March. But let's, let's look and see what happened. What happened in March? Okay, so March 2nd, I saw Andre 3000 with my buddy Danny in Atlanta, Georgia. I made a YouTube video called Art is a Devotional Act, and it's us in Atlanta talking about art and magic and destiny. Um, going on that trip was kind of the beginning of me changing my life, because um, you know the whole time I was in the audience, I was like, whatever spirits are around Andre 3000, like, I'm going to help make the world a better place. So, um, or better yet, I am helping the world become a better place. So I kind of called to those, those spirits to come to me. So, um, you know, always remember that when you see your idols or see somebody doing the thing, like, who knows what they got circling around them. Um, so I called that shit to me. Uh, next thing I knew that... That video caused a lot of controversy in my private circles, and I really don't um, have anything to do with those people now, which was really sad at the time. But you know, it's divine intervention. You know, man's rejection is God's protection. Um, and um, so, anyway, let me look at let me look at this five-year journal for you. So this is where, uh, this is another Hobonichi product. It's a five-year journal. And I mean, I'm in here like telling myself, you didn't do anything today. Or, you know, 
Um, so I can go back and look at this um, and see, you know, where I struggled and and then what days, weeks I was on a roll. So ooh, the point is, my plan was for March, but what I want you to know is, okay, so March. Um, I didn't go solo in March, but I went solo in April. I have on here so many pages where I wrote, did not light candle. I don't even know what that's talking about, but I was obviously doing something. All right, this is when I'm in Dayton for the eclipse. All right, I'm heading back. A lot of this is painful to look back at. Um, but you know, life cuts us free. But the, the important thing is, I wrote in this bad boy that by March, I would be a solopreneur. And it didn't happen in March, it actually happened in April. And what's interesting is the moves I was making in March, the things I was doing, showed the person who hired me that I was the man for the job. So in a way, um, even though I didn't quit my job in March, I was making moves in March like a like a man who was already going solo. So some of that's the fake, fake it cliche. I just started behaving like I had this business and grand like, yeah, I started back in September. I was trying to be real quiet about it because I've learned um, if you share too much of what you are planning to do, then you'll get feedback from people. And it's one thing if you're getting bad ideas from bad people, but when you do have a good social circle of 20 people, those 20 people may give you 20 really good ideas, but sorry, you gotta ignore that and stick to the plan. Even right now, I've had some huge epiphanies with this business and what I could do for people. And I've had to kind of be like, no, you said you were going to do this, so let's spend the next three months working on this, and then we can pivot, then we can niche down even more. Um, when's the last time you wrote down in a journal, like by this point in time, I'm going to be taking over the world? When's the last time you wrote something down and pasted it to your wall? Um, we like to talk a lot and talking makes us feel like we've done something. One, one of my biggest frustrations is when a colleague will text me, hey, what about this? We should do this. I hate that because it's like, we're already doing three, four, five different things when we should just be focused on the one thing. So when someone comes to me like, oh, this is a great idea, we should do this. It's like, when? Like, what are you, what? Why don't you put some of that energy into what we're doing now? Or show me how this idea could help us now. And I've had this discussion with collaborators and I have a really close one who is all about do all the things. And I've had to ask myself, you know, am I holding myself back? Is it, is it a mental thing when I tell myself like, nope, gotta be one thing at a time. I don't, I don't think it is. I think I'm right. The, the point is, you can do all the things, but it's got to be one thing at a time. And so this can help you organize. This can help you track. What's amazing to me is when we write stuff down, number one, we're protecting ourselves from that dopamine hit of like, huh, I've done something. I just said all this really cool stuff I'm going to do to these people. You don't get that when you write it down. When you write it down, it's just, it's like, you're dropping it into the river and those words float off and you can move on with your day. I've spoken in other videos before about how when I wake up, I'll just write down, I'll just like brain dump. And it's not so I can get practice writing, it's so I can just remove the garbage from my brain, the unresolved stuff, the stuff that's just not gonna get resolved. But I thought it was interesting that um, even though it was a month off, I wrote down that I was going to be full-time with the business in March. Boom, April it happened. And then um, after going overseas and doing some work, 
in London. Um, it only takes eight days, but that's what that's the amazing thing. Um, I was protected, you know. I I could literally right now um, have that person in my life, and but then having to deal with all the stress and questioning myself. The point of today's video is. Let's just see how bored you can fucking get. Write down where you're headed. Not necessarily your goals, but write down like, this is what we're moving towards. So for me, it was like, I want to be full time doing what I do. So, creepy stuff happens when you start making a plan. The key is to understand that what you think you want and where you think this is going is not necessarily the case. Um, I, I have a feeling that what Werecat will be doing six months from now will look very different from what we're doing now. And a year from now, the way we could be helping you um, could look a lot different from what we're doing now. Um, but the beauty is, I wrote down in my planner that by March I was going to be full-time self-employed. And would you believe it, by April, it was a reality. And... The amazing thing is, you level up like that, and next thing you know, people that you thought were your friends, uh, you know, a woman that I thought was my ride or die, like, those people are gone. They are gone. In such a crazy way, how could I not believe in magic and spirits and God? So... If you don't have a journal, I want you to just write it down on a piece of paper. Um, let's see. I'm going to put by October book done and ready to print put on shelves plus hands of readers we'll follow up in October you have everything you need to get started just do the work and I'll see you in the next one